eight, 99, 100. Hello, this is Joe with astrophoto.com. Today I'm working out to get ready for the astrophotography challenge across the pond. Recently, I asked Astrobloke, aka Glenn, to participate with me in what we both call the Astrophotography Challenge Across the Pond. He's located in the UK and I'm located in the US, so the name kind of fits. We've decided that we would take uh, an image of the Flaming Star Nebula and we would compare them with each other to see who took the best image. The rules are that you need to take the image in the SHO Hubble palette and that the sub-exposures need to be at least 10 minutes long. You could take as many sub-exposures as you could fit in. So I plan on doing at least three nights worth if I can. I know his weather has been pretty bad, so we'll see how many he could get into his. If you want to check out Astrobloke's channel, I'll leave a link in my video here and also in the description down below. Um, I think that we have very similar styles in our astrophotography, so it's pretty cool that we're gonna do this challenge together. You should really check out his channel. But there's a twist to this challenge. Once we gather our data and we stack it, instead of processing our own, we're gonna swap that data and process each other's. And we have somewhat of a different style of processing, but we both mainly process in pics and sight. So it'll be very interesting to see what we can come up with. We'll both be using William Optics telescopes. They'll both be doublets. His is a Z61 and mine is a Z81. I'll probably have to crop his just slightly to make it match the same field of view as the data that I gather. Uh, I think that I'm going to have a slight edge because I live in a Bortle class two to three zone where he lives in a Bortle class six plus zone. However, he's got a huge edge on me because he's going to be using the ASI 294 MM Pro, which has a lot better pixel density than my 1600 MM Pro. And I think he's going to be using the one times one binning mode. So I'm really excited to see the detail that that's going to bring out over my 1600. So that'll also be very interesting. I'm gonna be starting my imaging session tonight, hopefully. There's not supposed to be any clouds, but the wind here has picked up and the moon's getting to about 50% full. So I'll probably grab as much um, hydrogen alpha and sulfur data as I can and then wait for the moon to go down and then start grabbing some oxygen data. But I'll probably have to gather the oxygen data over the next two or three nights to equal the hydrogen alpha and sulfur that I can get while the moon's out. So it's doing the autofocus right now. I've got <clears throat> the first night, I'm gonna be able to do 16 frames of each HSO. And I'm gonna do it for 10 minute exposures like uh, we're supposed to be and I'm doing it with a gain of 139, so hopefully I won't blow out the, the stars. My framing is going to look somewhat just like it is right here, and we'll see how that works out. Here's some of my first images that I've gotten on the Flaming Star Nebula. Here's one in hydrogen. Here's one in sulfur after the meridian flip. Here's an oxygen after the meridian flip and after the moon went down. Um, I'm afraid that my ZWO filters just aren't that good. Um, you could see the huge halos that 
Um, they leave around the bright stars. So unfortunately, Astro Bloke's going to have his work cut out for him, trying to process these with uh, these huge halos. Three days later. So after two great nights of imaging on our target for the challenge, um, I ran into this wonderful cloud bank behind me, and it is not going anywhere. It's been around for the last couple days, and it seems like it's going to stay here for the next couple days. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to finish getting my third night's worth of data in for uh, Astrobloke to process. Uh, I might just have to send him the two nights worth that I have and see what kind of image we could produce out of it. So as you just saw, the weather was uh, not going to cooperate with me. So what I'm going to do is send Glenn the data that I do have and let him process that. I'm going to get his data as well. I heard that he had a pretty hard time with his weather. So I don't know how much uh, data that I'm going to have from him either. So it should be kind of interesting to see what we both can do with a limited amount of data on such a hard target as well. If you like this kind of content, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe as it really does help. And I'll leave you with the master files that I'm going to send over to Glenn so you can check them out. Don't forget to watch the next video where we'll be processing our masters.